Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Today, I am thrilled to share my personal experience to assist you in packing more efficiently for, for your first international travel adventure. We will begin with perhaps the most crucial aspect of travel preparation, that is handling and organizing our documents with great care. Organizing documents for an international relocation is crucial for a smooth transition. Here's what I did. Create a checklist. Begin by creating a comprehensive checklist of all your documents you will need for the relocation process. Divide the checklist into categories such as personal documents, financial documents, legal documents, medical records, etc. Personal documents. This includes passports, visas, birth certificate, marriage certificates, driver's license, IDP, and other identification documents. Keep both physical copies and digital scans of these documents. Financial documents. Collect documents related to banking, proof of income. Legal documents. Gather any required legal documents such as rental agreements, power of attorney, etc. If you are relocating for work, include employment contracts and offer letters. Medical records. Obtain copies of your medical records, vaccination records, prescriptions, and health insurance documents. It's also advisable to research healthcare options in your destination country. Insurance documents. Include insurance policies such as health insurance, travel insurance, and other relevant insurance policies. Educational records. If you have children, gather their school records, transcripts, and any other relevant educational documents. Organize and store. Organize your documents in a secure and easily accessible manner. Consider using folders, binders, or electronic document management systems to keep everything organized. Keep physical copies in a waterproof folder or pouch and store digital copies, if possible, in a secure cloud storage service or an encrypted drive. Make copies. Make multiple copies of important documents and keep them in different locations. Leave copies with trusted family members or friends. Carry copies with you while traveling and store digital copies in secure online location. The most important thing, review and update. Regularly review and update your documents checklist to ensure that you have all necessary documents up to date, especially if there are any changes in your personal or professional situation. From my experience, there was one very important document which I had kept in a separate place. When I boarded the cab, then I realized that I forgot one of my documents at home. I had to print it out on my way to the airport. So make sure that all your documents are in one place and you check them before you leave for the airport. Clothes. Be prepared with all weather attire. The clothing you bring from India will prove useful at various times in the UK. For instance, from June to August, summer clothes will come in handy. From September to November and from April to May, uh, you will need moderately warm attire. And uh, from December to March, you will need jackets or coats. From my experience, if you already have... <coughs> warm caps, gloves, uh, warmers, mufflers, scarves, uh, do bring them. Here in UK, it's, it's quite windy across the air. And if the weather is cold and also it's windy, then basically these, these things will come in handy. So don't forget about these. If you already have uh, warm caps or gloves or uh, mufflers, uh, warmer sets, scarves, do bring them and that will help you stay comfortable in the windy weather. I know we can always buy it, but if we have these in India, why not bring them? Because they won't uh, hardly take any space. So let's discuss uh, a little more in detail. Uh, let's again divide this into different categories. Say everyday wear. So when we talk about everyday wear, we can bring in t-shirts, tops, jeans, uh, trousers, shorts, casual uh, dresses, skirts, uh, lightweight sweaters, cardigans, undergarments, socks, uh, handkerchiefs. 
so yeah these this is there is a this is the list of say every every day we are right which will bring another category is your formal or professional wear make sure that you bring at least one business suit or blazer with you because if you need to buy one here it will be quite expensive uh, each one of us will have quite a few in india but let us bring one um, ladies can bring formal dresses uh, and dress shirts or blouses dress pants or skirts uh, as per their business uh, or professional wear traditional clothing is another uh, important aspect to think about uh, we'll have different cultural events or ceremonies to attend to so we do need to bring some traditional clothing when when we are uh, uh, packing our uh, everyday or uh, formal or professional wear accessories belts ties uh, that will complement your outfits jewelries watches sunglasses all these are small small accessories uh, make sure that uh, basically you bring all all these some few miscellaneous items umbrellas are very important who knows as soon as you land in uk it's raining so bring uh, at least couple of umbrellas with you another important thing is a swing kit uh, for uh, minor repairs say a button gets broken right uh, so uh, bring a swing kit and anything uh, that uh, uh, suits your hobbies or interests, right? It may depend from person to person. Um, just giving you overall idea as to what uh, you can bring. Remember to pack a few versatile tile items that basically matches matches your outfits or different outfits, so that you can uh, basically wear a combination of those and uh, maybe even with a small set, right? You can uh, basically change things around and and basically uh, utilize. Uh, uh, a mix and match uh, close um, additionally i would say check luggage restrictions and custom regulations for your mode of transportation and your airline uh, so that will help you uh, understand a bit uh, better as to what you can pack and what you can't next is shoes uh, i would say from my experience limit the number of shoes you pack from india wear the most comfortable ones and maybe perhaps uh, pack an extra set in case of rainy weather upon arrival consider refraining from purchasing new shoes uh, right before you travel as shoes are generally more affordable here compared to india additionally it is advisable to opt for water resistant if not waterproof uh, shoes uh, when in the uk because here it rains a lot so um, ideally, we sh if we are spending uh, our sh money for a new shoe, we probably need to buy a water-resistant or waterproof uh, shoe. Hence, buy uh, the shoes in the UK itself. One tip, explore options at a factory outlet here in UK. It uh, will help you with potential savings. Furthermore, uh, you will have to walk a lot uh, here in UK when compared to India. So... Uh, you need a good comfortable pair of shoes electronics when traveling overseas it's essential to carefully consider which electronic items to bring based on the needs and your travel plan here are some electronic items uh, to consider packing based on my experience chargers and adapters don't forget to pack charges for all your electronic devices i did for my camera other devices can be smartphones laptops uh, tablets or any other gadgets uh, you may want to bring based on my experience i would suggest bringing at least three universal adapters uh, we will likely need at least one but considering the possibility of renting a house with multiple floors you might at least need two and just in case one breaks like in my case you might need three i know uh, we can have multiple backups but i would say based on my experience at least uh, bring three universal adopters to uh, any place you go to if you have a laptop stand keyboard or mouse in india it's a good idea to bring them along it will save you some cost and it won't take too much space either portable power banks 
uh, nowadays i know the phone battery lasts a lot but uh, no harm in handing a no harm in having a, a power backup with you so bring a portable power bank noise cancelling headphones uh, flight might be very long uh, so noise noise cancelling headphones can make a long flights more comfortable uh, by blocking the ambient noise and you can listen to music watch movies uh, or do a lot of other things over your phone travel writer uh, sorry travel router if uh, you have a lot of work uh, to do while you are traveling uh, and you can't depend on uh, the insecure Wi-Fi so travel router is another I think uh, essential uh, necessity uh, electronic uh, item that one should uh, carry along health is, health and fitness uh, fitness devices if you use health and fitness devices like your uh, smart watches uh, do bring them along don't uh, forget to keep their charges another important uh, thing electric shaver or razor uh, do bring it uh, bring a travel uh, sized hair dryer it will help you uh, during your travel and immediately once you land um, bring a eyebrow and nose hair trimmer too uh, it's pretty expensive out here remember to pack these electronic items securely in your check sorry in your carry on luggage to ensure they are easily accessible during a journey again remember to pack all the electric electronic items securely in your carry on luggage additionally uh, i would say purchase a travel insurance just in case uh, something goes wrong during the travel a tip uh, from my experience uh, consider packing AAA and AA batteries uh, one they are quite expensive here in UK and secondly uh, having a spare uh, set of batteries uh, on hand can save you money and hassle especially for electronic devices uh, or gadgets that require them uh, uh, during your travels Let's discuss uh, utensils and food items. Uh, from my experience, it was challenging to find a good uh, rolling pin and board. Uh, in Hindi, we call it chakla and balan and a chimta pliers uh, in the UK. However, uh, most other utensils were available. So I, I recommend bringing whatever you can. Um, but uh, here are some essentials that won't take too much space and you can bring them along. Um, one is your pressure cooker, then uh, your chakla, bilan and chimta, uh, that is rolling pin, board and pliers if you are coming from India. Um, other than that, you can consider packing a couple of bowls and plates, some reusable utensil sets like fork, knife and spoon, a small cutting board and uh, a knife, especially if you plan to prepare your uh, own meals in the first few days, a small pot or a pan. Uh, if your accommodation has got uh, the cooking facilities. Uh, these basic items will help you cook and prepare meals comfortably during your initial days here in the UK, especially if you encounter a challenge in finding uh, specific utensils as soon as you arrive. I know you also need a few food items to go with the utensils and I'm going to cover it now. So again, based on my experience, uh, I recommend bringing food items that have a longer shelf life. You can easily find shops uh, here in the UK where you can purchase staples like dal, rice and atta. Therefore, it's it's advisable to carry only one or two kilograms of dal or, or rice for the first two, three initial days. For other food items, I'll say focus on bigger quantities uh, that are used daily, but in very small quantities like say uh, jeera, uh, turmeric, salt, pepper, heen. So, the spices which are used uh, in small quantities but bringing uh, the uh, big quantity might uh, basically last for a while so try to bring su such items rather than rice or dal which gets consumed pretty quickly and this will obviously help you save a lot of cost in your initial days and yes uh, one Im important thing to consider is pack a few instant meals like instant noodles or soups as a contingency plan as soon as you arrive here in uk you might uh, 
need these just in case you have you don't have the other uh, uh, utensils or other uh, uh, facilities available with you uh, only warm water will help you with some instant meals if you have them uh, a few tips uh, if you are a tea person i would advise uh, bring your preferred type uh, at least for the first two three four months because you might not find the one which you are using in india here uh, very frequently and even if you find one it, it will be rel relatively a lot more expensive than what it's in india and yes if you are a coffee person i think uh, you are in the right uh, country because it's much cheaper here when compared to india so probably don't bring any coffee rather than bring tea and yes when it comes to the food items i think you need to be a little careful as to where you are traveling because certain regions have uh, different uh, rules and regulations as to what you can bring in uh, a particular country so wherever you are traveling please make sure that you only uh, take uh, or pack those food items which are allowed in that certain uh, geography or region so it's very important to check uh, on a specific country or regions uh, rules and regulations before you pack up a lot of food A final few things, uh, important things to consider. Medicines. Obtain a prescription from a doctor and purchase a prescribed medication. Uh, please note, at least in the UK, obtaining antibiotics is restricted as doctors only prescribe them in severe cases. So if you need some uh, for an emergency, please uh, do get it prescribed from your doctor in India and bring it along paper stationary items uh, for some reason anything that is uh, related to paper right is very very expensive in the uk uh, like i will give you my example uh, once i posted a letter uh, in a small envelope uh, the envelope cost it was one pound 50 pence and the post office took only 80 pence to send it across uh, a4 size envelope here will cost you at least uh, two pound or three pounds so that is 300 rupees uh, when compared to what uh, in india i think we can get a a4 envelope say at what maximum five rupees or so so if you are a paper person if you need a lot of paper uh, i would say bring whatever you can at least a few envelopes uh, and notebooks because everything is super expensive when it comes to paper moving on uh, Passport size photographs, though I think in uh, major supermarkets uh, you might find photo booths, but uh, probably you would have already um, gotten a passport size photograph clicked while applying for the visa. So get get uh, additional set of photos uh, uh, while traveling. Mobile uh, covers and uh, screen guards, not every uh, mobile uh, screen guard model is uh, sold across the globe so in case you are traveling to a country where a particular model is not being sold it's a huge probability that you might not find one so probably get it replaced before you travel or if you already have a spare set bring it along i did not and it, i was not able to find one for myself a sim ejector tool as soon as you will land in uk uh, or any overseas country you might need to put a new sim card in your mobile uh, if you've not purchased a international uh, travel sim card so um, carry a sim ejector uh, tool with you so that you can uh, purchase a sim and uh, uh, your phone can be up and running with a international number and last but not least uh, carry a travel uh, sized grooming kit uh, it can uh, include essential uh, grooming tools such as nail clippers, uh, scissors, and a compact minor. Plus, uh, it can also probably hold your uh, travel size uh, toiletry bag. Um, so, spend in a uh, travel sized uh, uh, grooming kit or a travel sized uh, trolley bag with multiple compartments that will help you organize a little better. Last but not least, 
make the most of your uh, luggage uh, uh, weight allowance by utilizing it to the full extent uh, don't uh, let it go i hope uh, this video was uh, useful and you can implement a few uh, findings from my end while you are uh, planning your travel all the very best thank you for watching